I want to first start off and say um, what a joke, how disappointed I am that uh, Trent Frazier, obviously nobody has a clue what defense is, uh, that he's not on that award uh, finalist list. Uh, obviously, they don't talk to college coaches. Uh, more than likely, our style of play probably doesn't allow him to get enough steals, but they look at all the wrong numbers. They don't look at the opponents that he guards numbers when he plays them, because usually it's a night off for that, per for that person. Um, really, really disappointed. Uh, he's the best defender in the country. I look at what Io DeSumo is doing in the NBA. He's number one in terms of guys, uh, guys guarded in ball screen usage and, and, and effectiveness, and Trent Frazier is better than him. And uh, obviously our style of play hurts him, but uh, I want it out there publicly. It's not a defensive player of the year award, in my opinion, if he's not on it. Uh, I'm, I'm ticked off, I'm frustrated. Uh, I'd like to know who the committee is that, that puts that nonsense together. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously not intelligent people who, who are uninformed about styles of play and how, how defense truly impacts winning. So. Uh, on to Northwestern, uh, very, very good basketball team, a team that's got a lot of returners. Uh, they've got, they've got, in my opinion, uh, one of the most uh, under, underrated players in the league in Ryan Young, uh, a guy that minutes per play is, is having a fantastic year. Um, you know, they've got two veteran guards in Boo Booey and, and Adige. Uh, and then Robbie Behrens is, is developing into a, a really a good basketball player. So, uh, a very, very good team. It's Illinois Northwestern. It's, um, it's always uh, games that are hard fought and uh, come, down to the, uh, uh, come down to the very end. And I would not expect anything different uh, in this one. Both of you had a tough time executing offensively at the very end in your most recent games. Have you had a chance to work on any situations? Does it, is it infect, affected by the guys you're missing? Well, that has a little bit to do with, I mean, obviously Kofi's a pretty big presence and, and uh, you know, and is, is a guy that's at the top of everything we do. Um, Michigan State played great defensively, and yet we got really good shots. Uh, you know, we had great opportunities. Uh, Jake missed two or three. Uh, Trent got a really good look. Plummer missed a really good look. Uh, they made great defensive plays. We got to the rim. Uh, their guy... Uh, uh, made a block or two. Uh, I, you know, sometimes the ball doesn't go in. I, so you, you look at it as execution. I look at it as, as, as good execution that the ball didn't go in. Uh, but uh, again, it's, um, you know, you, you don't want to go nine minutes with two baskets, but uh, uh, you know, that's, um, that was the, the, the situation and we overcame it. Thanks, Brent. You know, Tom Izzo has said, you know, Chris, Chris Collins' team has a lot of good pieces. And that, you know, you see a lot of talent, a lot of guys who had, you know, pretty good recruiting rankings. But, you know, they've had trouble finishing games. Um, the results in conference play hasn't been there. I mean, what could be like that missing ingredient? What could be that secret sauce that when you have talent but not like putting it together, do you think? Yeah, I, you know, that's very hard to say. That, that would just be speculation on my point. I, I don't know. You've got to be around every day. Uh, Chris is one heck of a coach. Uh, they they run great actions. They they've uh, uh, they cause a lot of people issues. Um, you know they've got two guards who can score on ball screens. They're uh, they're much improved over the last few years in transition. Uh, they're you know down low a really really good offensive rebounding team. Um, you know and again it's it's. Um, uh, I agree with Tom. They've got really good pieces, and they're a team that is is is, is dialed in. They execute, um, and uh, you know it's it's a, it's a team that I really like looking at them and watching them on film. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach, do you, do you have an update today on Kofi and um, Curbelo? Uh, Curbelo has not been with us yet due to his protocols. Uh, Kofi is going through his protocols, so nothing, uh, nothing new on that front. And uh, you talked about Boo Boo. Can, could you go a little bit more in depth on him? What are some challenges uh, in slowing him down? Yeah, he's tremendous in transition. Uh, you know, he's got a green light. Chris has given him the opportunity to go score the ball. He's, you know, he's had thirty point games and conference games in, in his career, uh, but he's he's very very effective off of ball screens. 
Uh, he's got great range. And, uh, you know, he's added a nice, um, you know, a nice mid-range game. And, you know, where he gets downhill and he can put a lot of pressure on bigs uh, with the, uh, you know, with Nance and, and with, with Young, that he's got two bigs who set great screens and, and, and both can shoot it a little bit. So he's turned into a very, very dynamic player in this league. Thanks, Coach. Good morning, Coach. After the game on whatever night it was against Michigan State, you wrote on the board culture win. You guys haven't had your entire roster yet, and we're at the end of January. About how much has your culture really helped you guys be successful this season despite not having all your pieces? Well, I, I, and I don't want to devalue. We got really good players, in my opinion, and, and we've got pieces that fit into our culture. So it's not just – you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not a systemic, it's, it is a systemic thing, but it's, it's players that fit into our culture and what we're about. And, and um, you know, I, 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 I was ecstatic after the other night, just simply because we, we found a way and, you know, you've got two guys who are all Americans that, that aren't uniform. And, uh, you know, I could also go on a rant about Trent, Trent not being on the Koozie award list. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, you've got guys that, they're buying into what you do, but, um, you know, I, I think there's a part of that that will always be uh, who we are, toughness, connected, uh, guys that work really hard, um, and that's what I mean by that when I wrote Culture Win. So to follow up, you said the toughness aspect of it has helped you guys a lot, but you've also kind of maybe challenged that at times with your team this season. How do you balance the aspect of, they're not tough enough, but they're also tough enough to get these wins without some of these pieces. Yeah, it's feel. You know, there's days when I feel like I've really got to grind them. I've really got to challenge them. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, you can't just be one way all the time. I can't just be a, you know, a, a, a guy who just drives them and drives them and drives them. And, and all of a sudden we lose confidence. And, you know, that can happen when you don't have, when you don't have your guys. And, uh, you know, so so finding that level to give them confidence and to still push um, push that. Um, I, I love this team because of their uh, their independence when it comes to working to make themselves better. And it's not just in practice. I mean, um, you know, yeah, we practiced yesterday morning and yesterday afternoon. We've got six guys in getting a second lift and get in and. and you know, while I was in on the Alter G working out and, you know, it's just, that's voluntary. That's just them doing it. And that's, uh, that's making themselves better. And, and I'm, I'm excited about that. That's a, that's a big part, big piece of what we do. And if I could get one last quick one, you mentioned all these guys coming in for individual time on their own. Is that different than when you first got here at Illinois? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get guys to practice when we first got here. Um, yeah, it's a night, night and day. And again, it's, it's, it's the trying to get everybody to understand how hard winning is and, and how hard it is to be and get where they want to go, which is the top of the big 10 as a team. And then individually, you know, most of them want to go to the next level and, and that's hard work. And, and so you know, that's why we have the same character over characters. And, and it, it's it's a big piece of uh, our recruiting and a big piece of, of, of our culture. Thanks, Coach. Coach, when did uh, both Trent and DeMonte really buy into defense, defense, defense? I mean, did they arrive that way? Did they build the culture that way? Or when did those two guys really become such dynamic and versatile defensive players? Well, DeMonte was way ahead of Trent. Uh, in, in that capacity, uh, you know, you're talking about Trent was one of the most prolific scorers in the state of Florida. Um, you know, I'm not sure he knew defense, how to spell it or what it even started with. Um, you know, he was a challenge um, early on. And, you know, I, I, one of the great stories, one of the great memories I always have is Trent at Eastern in that uh, hurricane relief game sitting on the end of the bench crying saying he couldn't play here because he couldn't guard their guard. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's understanding what winning takes and you don't just score balls. You have to, you have to guard to win. And, and, you know, it speaks volumes to both those young men's character that uh, winning is the, is, is first and foremost with them and they're going to do what it takes. And I, and I know you come on here kind of talking about Trent, but certainly DeMonte's versatility is, is so overlooked too, isn't it? Defensively. Absolutely. He guards 
five positions. I mean, we had we had him guarding their center the other night for for four trips, and um, you know, and and then he was guarding you know Max Christie, and uh, you know, and it, it's just unbelievable to have a guy that can can do that, and and that's why. You know, in our system, that's important. Uh, but, you know, we're not the gambling, you know, shot blocking. We we try to take charges. We try to wall up at the rim, you know, not foul. You know, and our, our system hurts those guys because it's a numbers-driven thing. So, you know, everybody can talk about it when they say, oh, he's a defensive player of the year and he gets four assists a game or four steals a game or whatever. And we don't do that. You know, we don't, we don't force a ton of turnovers. But – Taking taking guys away from what they want to do, we're pretty good at that. Thank you. Hey, Brad, hard not to notice you stumping for for Trent there. Why is it so important to you that that he get noticed uh, in these you know awards and watch lists and things like that? You know, there's very few opportunities that we get to talk about individuals and individual awards, and 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 I'm not that guy. You know, I'm team and we and 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 that is Trent. And, and when I can go to bat for, for one of our guys and something that I know he deserves to be there and I think is wrong, I'm going to do that. And uh, I, I know very, very seldom, I think there's very few coaches in the country that are talking to a guy about, well, how do you want to guard? What do you like? How do you feel? What, what do you see? And, and, and know that 99% of the time that sucker's right. And, and it's just the way he feels in those situations and you trust it. And, you know, he takes more pride in what he does on that end than what he does on the other. And so I got to fight for him, man. It's that's wrong. And it's, it's a numbers driven deal. I get it. Uh, but, um, you know, our system hurts him. And, you know, I look at what, what, uh, our young man with the bulls has done and, and shoot, he was our third defender, you know, last year. I mean, Trent was Trent, Trent was always one and that's no offense to what IO's done, but um, you know, cause he's, he's elite at it as well, but, uh, Trent always drew the assignment and for him not to be recognized. And especially with what I was done, it just, it just magnifies that in my opinion. And given everything you've been through, Brad, with, with Andre being out him being the number one point guard and, and Kofi being out here recently, um, do you think there's the case obviously for, for all big 10 for, for your own team MVP? Like what, what's the value of what he's given you? All the above. It's huge. You know, and and uh, you know he he's he's been the one piece that nobody wants to talk about. Every I get it. Everybody else, and all he does is play thirty eight minutes a night and make every shot. And and um, uh, you know it, it's be an unbelievable kid, uh, be an unbelievable leader. Uh, you know, if I can tell you this, we're not where we're at without him. And and if that doesn't mean impact and all that stuff. You know, that's for others to judge, obviously, but I know where I feel in my heart with him. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad, I know you have said, you know, because of what he does defensively, you're not worried about DeMonte on the offensive end, but has he been a guy just because of the absences whose output maybe has been impacted by going from role to role offensively? Sure. Yeah, I mean, he last year he was very – uh he, he was he was very singular in his role and that's why he led the you know led the country or was second or whatever in three-point field goal shooting that was what was asked of him and that's what that's what he became great at doing and and spacing the floor and and uh you know this year he's he's literally and still is you know he's playing the point you know he's been um you know it, it really one of four spots and and you know so his role's been a little bit um uh more diverse than it has been, you know, last year, but uh, we need DeMonte to shoot balls and, and shoot him in. Cause he's a very, very good shooter when he's open. And, um, but uh, yeah, he's a, he's a big part of everything we do as well on that end. What have been those conversations with him? I mean, understanding that he, he does know how to fit into specific roles, but also that he does have the shooting ability. How have you tried to find that balance? Yeah. And I, you know, I think there's, there's a, uh, uh, shows how smart he is because he knows really four spots uh, in all of our sets and actions. But I think the one thing it's, 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 it's not as easy as you think going from, Hey, I'm a point guard to now I'm a power forward. And uh, 
you know, making that, making that transition. And, um, you know, maybe his reps are down, uh, you know, shooting the ball uh, compared to last year. But, uh, you know, he's, he's all about winning and what we're going to do to win. And, and he's, he's been great at that. And, and we do need him to shoot the basketball when he's open because he's, he's going to make it. And if I could get one more, are you able to say what day Andre first entered protocols? I don't even know. I, I mean, it's based on symptoms, and I don't even know when his symptoms started. I, like, I, like I told you guys, I don't ask. So he's, he's not been with us yet because of all that so whatever days the cdc tells us they've i don't i don't even know so i'd be just be speculating all right thank you brad hey brad i had a question for you um i'm sure you guys took a look at the film on that michigan uh, northwestern game was just curious to know your thoughts on how they battled um and how you think that holds uh for your matchup up tomorrow they were terrific um you know i thought that uh they did an unbelievable job on hunter uh, they used a variety of matchups. We know that, you know, their tendency has been to post trap and, and double. Um, I thought they were very, very dialed in on the offensive end as well. They exploited, uh, you know, certain matchups. Uh, they got great play off their bench with Greer and a couple of big threes. Uh, yeah, I thought they were, you know, I thought they were dialed in. I thought they had a great game plan. They have multiple guys that, you know, the Williams, uh, Williams came in off the bench, undersized, very, very strong. He's got a great lower base um, and, and, and really did a great job in, in really single coverage on, on Hunter. So, you know, I think there's a lot of comparisons um, in, in terms of what Michigan has been uh, and us in the past. Now, I don't know what that'll look like, you know, with depending on who we have and what we have, but uh, yeah, they they did a great job and they did a good job of, of, uh, uh, you know, Michigan got a couple threes late, but they were contested and that was, that was the difference in the game. Hey, Brett, what's, what's the challenge of maybe, you know, having to, you know, as you're trying to find ways to win in the big 10 and do it though, when things are shifting so much from a personnel standpoint. We've probably done more scheming this year uh, than we have in the past. Last year, we've kind of been who we were and, and we made small adjustments. This year, it's been more, um, okay, we don't have Kofi and, uh, or we don't have this. Uh, this, is, this, is, this may be something we're gonna have to look at to help protect without trying to reinvent the wheel, knowing that, that, that when we get those guys back, uh, we've got a base in that that hasn't changed. And uh, that's probably the hardest part is, uh, you know, it's been more of a game by game strategy than maybe just us continuing to grow with our foundation and, and, and play out from there. So, you know, it's been it's been challenging losing, not knowing who we have, you know, and uh, that's that's kudos to our staff. They've done a great job with that. So how have the players maybe adjusted to that and also maybe adjusted to, you know, different lineups and different rotations and maybe not having a consistency at least you know, this year? Great so far. Great. You know, I mean, you get a Luke Goody stepping up, you, you know, RJ stepped up, Pajemski, all those guys keep working and, and doing their job. Obviously the job Ben has done has been, uh, you know, phenomenal. He didn't play hardly at all in four games and now he's a, you know, he's a starter and, uh, you know, Omar has been impacted. His minutes have gone up. So I think everybody's continued. And, and that's what I talk about with our culture. Everybody's continued to work on their game, get, stay ready, take that opportunity when it's there. And, um, uh, and it's, it's helped us and it's, it's helped them grow as well. Thanks, Brad. Non-basketball question. There's a visitation this afternoon for associate vice chancellor, Clarence Shelley, who was for 40 years, the, the guy who recruited black students and developed black students at the University of Illinois. I just wonder if you ever had a chance to meet him. I did not. I did not. Thanks. Coach, uh, end of game situation seems like it could be big in this game. It had, you know, it's been an issue for Northwestern and uh, it was almost an issue for you against Michigan State. It, from a coaching standpoint, is that something that you can impact and that you practice? 
sure, we practice situations all the time. And, uh, you know, there's, there's certain situations. You know, we had three situations. We went over it on film. Uh, you know, Trent's not going to very often miss a free throw, front end of a one and one. Uh, you know, we had the situation that he missed. Um, you know, we talked about the what was almost an and one and the foul. Uh, we talk, talked about the free throw blockouts. We talked about, you know, what our scenario is and we work on it a, a good amount. Uh, you know, if we're up three, uh, what we what we like to do in those scenarios. So we talk about them a lot. We show a lot of other teams' situations. Uh, you know, there was one happened in the Michigan Northwestern game, free throw blockouts. Uh, you know, Michigan uh, didn't block out on missed free throws. Northwestern got two opportunities off missed free throws. And, and so we talk about those things a lot. And uh, uh, knowing that every game, you know, most every game is a two possession game. That's the difference between winning and losing. And, and uh, uh, we don't just, uh, we don't just talk about them. We have segments in practice, one minute games down four. Um, a lot of situations we got one in today. Um, you know, that's a, that's a two minute game. So uh, it's, it's, it's great to practice those, know where you want, know what you want on a side out of bounds, need a three, so on and so forth. There's a million of them. You can't get to all of them, but uh, yeah, you, you try to get as many as you can and, and, uh, and the most relevant ones. How do you, how do you balance wanting to run some time off the clock with still being aggressive and getting a good shot? Personnel more personnel based than anything I know we you know we were pretty patient at the end of the game I think we had 12 possessions in the last nine minutes uh so were they um and um you know I think the one thing that we tried to do was you know make sure the ball was in Trent's hands know where we were trying to go uh you know with it um, and again Trent very easily could add 10 12 assists the other night we missed some really good shots Plummer got downhill twice uh, you know, one of them was a great block. Uh, the other one, he missed a wide open kick out. We, we talk about those things, but, um, you know, every situation is different and, um, uh, you know, you're going to keep the ball in the right guy's hands, stay aggressive, um, uh, and, uh, and know that the game's going to be, you know, shortened a little bit to try to negate any run that they could go on. Brad, you mentioned, uh, Kofi's still in protocol. Has he worked out with you or done anything with you guys yet? That's all part of our protocol. Our protocol is about 10 steps. So the, the protocol is goes from waking up and getting out of bed and how do you feel to, to, to finally getting back to a full, full participation. So there's, a, there's so many processes in there and steps in there that, that our trainers and doctors have to go through. It's meetings with doctors. Uh, it's, it's testing. Uh, so I don't even know where he's at in it. So it's based on all of his symptoms. And, and so he, he'll, uh, uh, he'll take that, uh, that next step, um, this afternoon. So he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, uh, practiced to this point with us. Thanks. Brad, if I could get one more, um, after Tuesday's performance, especially defensively, is there a case to get Luke more minutes here as the season progresses? Sure. Sure. I, and anything that helps us win. Um, you know, I, I think that, that there's a different uh, feel for every game. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's a young man that works his tail off and is as, as produced. And, um, you know, I don't go into a game thinking, Hey, I'm going to play him or I'm going to play him. It's just kind of a, kind of a feel by the matchups and how it works, but uh, uh, absolutely. He's been great. And, and, I knew his three-point shooting, the way Michigan State uh, covered and, and tried to guard and corral Trent, uh, that he'd get some looks, and, and he stepped in and knocked him down. And he was great defensively. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. I think that's it. Derek, I'll hang on till uh, you join us again.
I want to tell y'all that I know WCIA and the News Gazette both already did things about Clarence Shelley, but if you guys don't know who he was, it's worth looking into. There, he did mentor a lot of student athletes over the years, but not just student athletes. Was he retired and, and when did he pass? Uh, he was 90 years old. He retired first in 2001 and then got brought back because he was so good at the things he did. And it, I, it was like 10 days ago, I think. Thanks. Okay. Go ahead, sir. All right, you guys can. We good? I I did get kicked off. But I think I'm back on now. We all right? All good, Derek. All right. Let let Jim Matson get us going here. So Monte wants to hear from him. My boy Jim. Hey, Monte. What's up, buddy? Hey, we we're talking a lot about your uh, your defense a little bit. Where, where did your defensive mindset start? Did it start at Peoria Emanuel? Did it start just growing up in Peoria, or when? When did you really uh, embrace uh, defense? Um, in high school, playing for uh, Coach Booth, um, coming in as a freshman, I knew that was the only way I'd see the floor as on varsity. So, I, mean, I just locked in on that ever since then. You guard bigs, you guard smalls. Do you have a preference? Do you do you go into a game? Are there guys you really enjoy guarding? Uh, no, I don't really really care who I guard. Um, coach giving me an assignment every game, and I just Try to take care of that assignment. You're not shooting as much this year. Is that just the opportunities aren't there, or how 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 would you explain your maybe your lack of shooting? Uh, I'm not really worried about that. Um, I mean, shots will fall. Um, I mean, we got guys at Plumber, Jay, Trent. I mean, those guys are are hot. So why not keep feeding the hot hand? Thanks, Monte. Hey, Monte. Uh, after the game against Michigan State, Coach Underwood wrote on the board culture win and underlined it and stuff. As someone who's been a part of this entire trip with him, what did it mean for him to write that on the board as someone who's been a part of the building of the culture? I mean, that that, that was a big time win for us. Um, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. It was it was tough um, mentally and physically. Um, it's just what we go through every day. And then to follow up, Coach Underwood said that after practice, I think yesterday there were six or seven guys who came back to Hub and are back to State Farm to get extra shots up, and that was a much contrast to the beginning where you guys struggled to just get everyone to practice, I think were his words. Can you just describe, I guess, how much different things are from when you were a freshman to now in terms of getting extra work and the accountability, the desire to win, and all of the different things that you guys have now? Uh, I mean, just everybody just had that will to just get better, um, no matter what it is. Um, just come in, watch a film, or getting up extra shots. Monte, um, after the game, Tom Mizzo referred to you as Illinois' version of Draymond Green. I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think about that comparison and uh, how familiar you are familiar you are with or you know your opinion of Draymond Green as a player. Oh Jesus don't say that after after the game on Tuesday night Tom Izzo referred to you as Illinois version of Draymond Green. So I wanted mm -hmm. to get your opinion on that comparison and um just what you think about Draymond as a player. Oh I, I mean I didn't even know he, he said that but um 
watching Draymond Green play is, I mean, he does every everything he needs to to get done so that that his team can get the uh, win. And he sacrifices his body. I mean, he guards one through five, um, plays one through five. I mean, he don't really care. Just really just going out there and giving it his all each and every night. Like players like that sometimes be referred to as like a Swiss Army knife. If somebody, you know, as an analogy, if can do it all, is that something you kind of aspire to be? Some guy who really can do just pretty much anything on the floor. Is that something you really value? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just try to do whatever it takes for us. I mean, for for me to put our team in a good position to win, um, whether if it's guarding six ten, six eleven, and pushing them out or whatever get them uncomfortable off the block or whatever, chasing somebody off ball screens. I mean, really just trying to trying to win. Thank you. Hey, DeMonte, what does it take for you to be able to switch like that, to go from somebody 6'10 and taller than you to chasing around a point guard? Like, how do you do that in the moment so effectively? Um, It just, I mean, really just go out there and really just doing it. Um. I mean, it takes takes a lot of energy, uh, effort, and um, just really the will to do it. And then offensively, I mean, you seem to play quite a few positions as well. What are the, especially as guys have kind of been in and out of the lineup, what are the challenges of, of playing all of those different positions on offense and maybe finding your role there with the group around you? Um, um, I look at it as next man up um, and just going out there and just competing at a high level so we can win. Coach was not very happy about Trent being left off of the defensive player watch list or finalist list. Do you, do you have any thoughts on maybe Trent's defense being overlooked? I mean, that dude there is going – he's he'll go on one through five just like I will. Um, but, I mean, it's – that dude is cat quick. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super shocked that he didn't even get uh, announced on that list. Um, he should have, in my opinion, he should have got been on that list. I think he's one of the best defenders in the, in the country. One more, if I could, do you, do you guys talk about that? Like when that came out, I'm assuming it was maybe pointed in Trent's direction pretty quickly. I mean, do you guys just as close as you two are have any conversations about stuff like that? Um, we talk about it here and there, but I mean, we have a common goal and that's just to win and do whatever it takes. So we don't really get into it. Thanks, Monte. Monte, you know, tomorrow's game is going to be like the midway point of the Big Ten schedule, and you guys are tied for first place right now. Just how do you feel like you, as a team, have managed that? Even as you know, guys have missed you know games and lineups have been different, and maybe all the challenges thrown your way. Um, really, just being ready for whenever your number is uh, called, um, no matter who it is. Um, just staying ready and and being locked in. I mean, I know that was a you know, Big Ten titles a goal for the team this year. Does that just – the idea that you, you can still get that, does that keep guys maybe going when things have been tough? I mean, when when, when stuff gets tough, um, that's when you come together as a, as a group and um, just keep playing harder and harder for each other. And, I mean, we all know what's, what's on the line, but we just go out there and compete as hard as we can for each other just to see each other smile and have a good time. Thank you. Hey, DeMonte, um, in your words, how does it feel when you have so many of your teammates that just view you as that ultimate, not just glue guy, but just one of the more important pieces on the team? How does it feel? Yeah, for you, yes. I mean, it, it feels good knowing that um, I'm a key piece into what we're doing, but it's also um, them holding me accountable to what I can bring to to the table each and every day. DeMonte, one more if I could. I mean, where have you kind of crafted, you've been more or less a backup point guard when Andre has been out behind Trent. Where, where have you kind of crafted that ability to slide over into that role? Um, Like I said earlier, I just look at it as, I mean, next man up. Um, just really trying to get the assignment done. That way we can uh, get the W.
has this, I mean, you said that a lot, the assignment next man up, has this always been you or is this just what it looks like in understanding what five in five years of college basketball, kind of what it takes? Like, would you have maybe answered in the same way as a freshman or is that, does this come with maturity? Um, yeah, no, I, I would have answered that um, when I went down with my ACL in high school. Um, I mean, I went down and, and I told my teammates in high school, I mean, it's really next man up. It's really y'all time to shine now. So just be collective and go out there and play as hard as y'all can for each other. Thanks, Monte. Monte, what have you seen on, without giving away the scouting report, obviously, what have you seen on film um, about Northwestern, some challenges that they'll present uh, on Saturday? Um, it'll be a, a good hard fought game. Um, I mean, they're playing good. I mean, you can't really look at anyone's record in the, in the Big Ten. Every team is good. Um, and we just got to be ready to compete at a high level. Uh, they got a guard that scores quite a bit in Boo Booey. What, um, what are some challenges in checking him if if that is your assignment? Um, really just doing what we do um, and being collective as a group and um, pulling, trying to go up there and play as hard as we can so we can pull out the W. Thank you. Hey, uh, Monty, just following up kind of what Joey said there. Uh, I mean, when you're especially a high school junior before the injury, I mean, didn't you think you'd go to U of I and score a bunch of points? Didn't you think you'd be a, a, a offensive guy? I mean, how how different is this role than maybe what you projected maybe before the ACL injury? Um, yeah, I mean, those were definitely my thoughts. But um, coming in college, I knew it was going to be a lot different just the way high school to college basketball is. Um, coming to the Big Ten is more physical. Um, people are bigger, stronger, uh, faster, everything. But um, really just having that, that that drive to just go out there and play as hard as I can for my teammates and, and for the name on the front of the jersey. Thanks. Uh, one final one, DeMonte. What are you most proud of that you bring to the court? Uh, just the excitement and energy, just, just having fun out there. Um, just seeing my, my teammates smile and, and get pumped up off whatever happens. Thank you.